what inspired you to get into acting? What matters is the story and how you craft it. You've answered a lot of the questions already with that one answer, so that's fine. <laughs> I wouldn't go and have headshots where, uh, I mean, I would have my hair up businesswoman because that's not really my character trait. So I'd say, first of all, headshots, get the headshots that will suit your character type. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Film Forums. My name is Millie Haywood and today I have a very special guest with me. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Laura Ellen Wilson and I am an actress from Lancashire. So Laura, um, can you tell us a bit about how you got into acting? Um, so I've always been interested in acting, but I wasn't kind of sure if I wanted to do pantomime, theatre or camera. Um, I did a couple of stage plays when I was in school, but I think the sort of pivotal point for me was um, in my martial arts school, my instructor decided to make a short film to distribute around the local schools so that uh, all, the, all the kids kind of knew about defence and martial arts and I ended up playing the main role in that first time on camera and that's kind of where I've gone from since there, so yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yes, yeah, so you started from quite a young age um, with acting and things. Yeah, I think I was probably around 11 or 12 when I got that role. Um, but I was probably, I'd say I was probably performing in front of an audience since I was maybe seven or eight. So yeah, it's kind of, I've kind of been brought up with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, with your, so your martial arts background, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, and some of the sort of martial arts that you've been involved in? Yeah, so I started uh, training in Kung Fu when I was 10. Uh, the Kung Fu that I train in is a mix of Wing Chun and uh, Jeet Kune Do with a touch of Lao Ga in there. They're all individual disciplines, but these are sort of all three mixed together. Um, I started when I was 10 and I probably did about three or four sessions with the older class. Uh, with some of the older girls and I, I, there's no really nice way to say it. I kind of, I held the pads, one of them kicked me and I just went sh straight on the floor and that was me done for about six months. <laughs> um, I, I think I left that session in tears, it was horrible. Um, I went back about six or seven months later um, and I absolutely loved it. I don't know what changed. Um, but yeah, I, I've just kind of, I've, I've loved it ever since, yeah. Oh, awesome. I've always wanted to try martial arts or stunt performing. I think it'd be absolutely amazing. It looks fantastic in action films and stuff. I'd love to give it a go. Um, so wh when it comes to advice, um, what sort of advice would you give for um, to actors uh, trying to get into stunt performing? Um, it's a lot different to just training in class. Um, one of the main things that I've found is you need to have a lot of stamina because um, as an actor you're performing take after take after take and that's emotionally draining but if you're going to be performing in stunts and fight sequences you're going to need to have so much stamina for both the emotional, the physical, the mental, everything to be take after take. Um, I only have a small bit of experience in that myself I'd love to do more um but indie film at the moment there's not so much action coming up but from from the experience that I've had um it was extremely draining but watching the finished product it was so worth it um but yeah the the main thing that I would say is stamina is everything um and technique because there's a lot of people out there who are also experts in martial arts and they're always going to be trying to see your technique and everything so yeah that's great yeah I think that um a lot of the time sometimes when audiences are watching films they they don't realize how much sort of blood sweat and tears goes into a film especially with um stunts and performing like that must be really full-on and quite sort of exhausting at times um, so uh, I know you've also uh, written, directed and produced your own short film, uh, In the Bluebell Wood. Uh, what was it like working mm -hmm. on this project and juggling all these different roles? It's been very difficult, actually. It's, I mean, 
I would do it all again because as soon as we wrapped, it was so rewarding. I was crying so much in front of all of these kids going, ah, Laura's crying. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I was actually, I've been really, really lucky because at the time when we started pre-production, um, I was actually furloughed from work. So I wasn't working and I had nothing to do. So my entire day, I was probably spending like 10 hours on a laptop, um, sort of <sighs> script rewrites, uh, shot lists. And it was, it has been quite difficult because we've had three camera units as well. So I've been trying to figure out where each camera can sort of slot in and try and work out a time frame. Cause obviously we've got loads of kids on set as well. Um, and they're obviously very limited to time that they can be on camera. Um, so, I mean, the, the whole process itself has been incredibly rewarding. Um, working with um, my co-director, Laura Saxon, as well, we've both kind of been bouncing off each other um, when either of us have had sort of down days, thinking, oh my gosh, you know, we've got so much to do. The other one sort of brought each other up. So it's been a really, really nice partnership. Um, but yeah, the... the Oof, the whole process itself has been overwhelming, but extremely rewarding. And we're in, um, we're really, really close to a final cut right now as well. Um, and we're both kind of watching it back and we've got all these ideas coming. We've, we've just had the final composition come through as well. So trying to imagine the music over the action and everything, it's just really exciting. So, yeah. And how long did it take to shoot um, the whole film? Well, originally we were supposed to have um, two consecutive night shoots and then a day shoot. Um, it was a night shoot on a Monday and a Tuesday. We were supposed to have the day off on Wednesday and then shoot the day shoot on Thursday. Day shoot the day shoot. That made sense, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't make sense. <laughs> um, yeah, you made sense. Yeah, and then the day shoot <laughs> on the Thursday. Um, but we ended up falling behind a bit. Um, on the Monday, uh, we did the internal shots um, during sort of dusk time. Um, was supposed to be set at night, but obviously we've got loads of kids. They're all gonna be on set until like 3 a.m. Anyway, we don't want dawn sunrise to come in. So we had them all on set dusk time and we were having a bit of a heat wave and inside the cabin where we were shooting was so hot. So we had to keep coming in and out and let, bringing all these fans in. So we ran a bit behind on the Monday. So um, we ended up bringing um, a few of the characters back on the Wednesday evening. So we ended up having technically three night shoots and one day shoot. Um, the, the crew was absolutely wiped out as soon as we finished on the Thursday. Um, but yeah, it's just, we were all buzzing because the kids were all on set. Their energy in itself is just incredible. Um, but yeah, we, we were supposed to film for three days, but it ended up being a four. So when it comes to uh, advice for other filmmakers who are, say, directing and shooting their own project, uh, what sort of thing would you say if they're sort of taking on all those, all those roles all together? If there was somebody who was starting to work in their first film, somebody who's done one film before, I would say organisation and preparation, you can't do enough of it embrace the process make sure you've got um an excel spreadsheet of what you need to do day in day out <laughs> if you're um if you're a bit scattered like me then you'll get a bit sidetracked <laughs> um but yeah organization is absolutely everything we we would have gone so off if we hadn't have been as organized as what we were um make sure everybody your cast and crew are on board the project 110%. I've really enjoyed it. It's been really, really stressful, but overall, remembering the process in itself, it's, it's just been incredible. I've really, really enjoyed it. I wouldn't hesitate to do it all again. Maybe, maybe in about 12 months time, but I would definitely do it again. <laughs> when it comes to acting, where would you suggest that um, sort of new actors that are looking to Get into the industry where should they start because i know there's loads of websites and things um but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming sort of it's like where do i start yeah definitely um i would first of all i would start by getting some headshots because that's literally the first thing 
even if you've got no credits, the headshot is the first thing that people see. Um, and also with the headshots as well, I see so many people who have, um, they, they, I mean, for example, if you're taking me, I usually play the nice girl slash girl next door. Um, I wouldn't go and have headshots where, uh, I mean, I would have my hair up businesswoman because that's not really my character trait. So I'd say, first of all, headshots, get the headshots that will suit your character type. Um, secondly, Facebook has been incredible for networking and meeting people. A lot of my roles have come from connections on Facebook. A few websites, I mean, Star Now has been great. I've had some really great roles on Star Now, um, especially student films as well. Um, get the flexibility with student films to play roles that you don't normally find with paying jobs and they're always really good to have cut in a showreel. Um, Mandy.com, obviously Spotlight, but that's a little bit further down the line when you get a few professional credits. Um, social media, I mean social media is the first port of call I would always go for. You can meet so many people, you can network. Um, Twitter, follow follow all the casting directors on Twitter, follow film companies, directors, everything, you know. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely start with headshots and social media. Awesome. Um, and my final question would be, so what piece of advice do you wish that you had known before starting your filmmaking journey? That's, you know, I kind of wish that I would have had somebody say what I just said now before I started with the whole headshots thing and the networking 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 um just get involved um if, if you follow a film director on Twitter Facebook Instagram they're making a new film shoot them a congratulations comment on their post you know um algorithms which is a whole different thing um if you're commenting and liking somebody's status you're going to see their posts more regularly Chances are, if they post a casting call out on their Facebook, you're going to see that. Um, so, social media is indispensable. Don't take it to heart if you don't get the role. It's not necessarily about your acting, it's your look. And the casting director has something very specific in mind. Um, so, yeah, it's you're going to get several no's before there's a yes, but when you get the yes, it's going to be great. Thank you so much. That's really great advice. Um, you've been absolutely that fantastic. That was so cheesy, wasn't it? <laughs> no, not at all. Thank you. It's really great to know because so many actors have different sort of types of advice. But um, yeah, you've got some really great tips. So thank you ever so much for coming on to Film Forums. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you.